you sit right next to me anyway. Well, you sit with Helen. Oh, you are so smart. Right. I've seen you before, but I Since Jim is an attorney, he knows all the ins and outs. I'm going to get that good. You want to be serve again on the last chair? Good morning, everyone. Can you all hear me? I'm kind of, my speaker isn't working. Okay, I want to call the meeting to order of the June 5th Industrial Development Board meeting. Uh, we have a quorum, and I know this meeting was duly um, advertised. Yes, ma'am. And so um, with that, um, a motion to call the meeting to order. Second. Second. Okay, great. Um, the first item on our agenda today is the election of officers. Um, we do this every year, and so um, we do it in June. And so we want to elect a new chair, vice chair, secretary, and assistant secretary. Um, so we'll open nominations at this time for chair. Madam Chairman, I nominate Jimmy Rogers for chairman. Okay, we have a nomination for Jimmy Rogers. Madam Chair. Yes. I nominate Carrie Hayes for chairman. Great. We have a nomination for Carrie Hayes. Any other nominations for chair? Okay. We have two nominations for chair, Jimmy Rogers and Carrie Hayes. And so let's vote on these nominations. All those in favor of Jimmy Rogers, say aye. Aye. Uh. Raise your, Raise your hand. hands because yeah, I can. Two. All those in favor for, so we have two votes for Jimmy Rogers. All those in favor for Carrie Hayes. Raise your hand. <laughs> we have four nominations for Carrie Hayes. So Carrie Hayes has four, nomina four votes. Um, Jimmy Rogers, two votes. So Carrie Hayes, do you accept the? I do. Thank you. Okay, great. Next is vice chair. Any nominations for vice chair? Madam Chair, I'll nominate uh, Althea Jones. Okay, I accept. Any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, none. And third, we'll vote on Althea Jones for vice chair. All those in favor, raise your hand. I accept, and so we have our vice chair. Um, next is secretary. Any nominations for secretary? I nominate Gordon Parker. I'll accept. Gordon Parker. Any other nominations for secretary? Okay, none being heard. Um, all those in favor for Gordon Parker, our secretary? Raise your hand. Okay, we have that. Gordon Parker will be the secretary. Um, next is assistant secretary. Any nominations for assistant secretary? I'll nominate Patrick Sharpley. Sharpley. Any other nominations for assistant secretary? Haven't heard none. All those in favor of Patrick Sharpley? Raise your hand. Great. Patrick Sharpley is Assistant Secretary. 
Okay, we have our new officer slate um, for the year. Congratulations, Carrie Hayes, Althea Jones, Gordon Parker, and Patrick Sharple. You're good. All right. So with that, um, Carrie, <laughs> want to take over as yeah, okay. chair of the IDD. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thank you very much. Looks like our first uh, next piece of business is a motion to accept the minutes and transcript of our April 17th, 2023 meeting. Do I have a motion? Move. Second? Second. Any opposed? Uh, next, we'll have a recognition of anyone willing to address the board this morning. Good morning. My I'm so name sorry. is. Ma'am, real quick, I'm so sorry. I thought we'd... Oh, I'm so sorry. Can I have a vote on the uh, acceptance of the minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Minutes are accepted. Thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. My name is Janice Gooden. Could you adjust the microphone down a little bit for you? You can. It doesn't move. It doesn't move. I'll talk louder. <laughs> My name is Janice Gooden. Uh, I am a member of Caleb, but my address is 2125 Elena Drive. I did notice on the agenda that you are looking at the one West Side program, the uh, TIF application. My church is on the West Side, so I'm very interested in this. Although I don't know the details of the TIF application, I am in support of the project itself. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, my name is Helen Byrne Sharp. I'm recommend, uh, representing Accountability for Taxpayer Money. ATM is a public interest advocacy group that focuses on property tax and sales tax incentives and government transparency. I sent an email to the board. I'll try to be brief. I recognize this is not the public hearing, that that will come later. But since this is about the application, I had a couple of questions about the application. So I sent this out to the, the, the members and the development team over the weekend, so you probably have a copy of this. My first question is, how much is the applicant requesting in TIF property and sales tax assistance? That question is asked on the application itself in question 11, and you're referred to Schedule 10 and to Exhibit D, but they have different numbers. One says 100, uh, 275 million, and one says 115 million. So I'm sure they'll be able to clarify that. Number two, is this a debt service TIF where the city issues a bond, or is it a pay-as-you-go TIF where the TIF increment is used to reimburse the applicant for deliverables as work is done? Number three, if a TIF bond is contemplated, what is the projected cost of the capitalized interest that would be paid over the life of the TIF? Number four, other than for public infrastructure at the bend, what else will TIF funds go towards? It's an article in the Times Free Press following the announcement at the site, and it referenced that 53% that of the extra property tax revenues generated by the development will be used to help the Chattanooga Housing Authority fund its west side redevelopment, along with providing funding for some of the cost of a new downtown school, fire hall, stormwater, and sidewalk upgrades. That sounds great as public interest, but what is the definition of extra? When and by whom would the amount be determined? Does the state require some specificity on all elements of TIFs? The applicant is very specific about the infrastructure at the Ben site to be financed with TIF funds, but these other items are general and are not mentioned or located in any of the attachments to the agenda. Again, I'm sure they can explain that. Please explain more about the term of the TIF. Question 12 asks the number of years the TIF assistance is requested. The applicant's response is 20 years upon completion of each phase of construction. There are three phases. As each phase ends, will the property for that phase go back on the tax rolls? 
Are there estimates on which each that's incorrect. Now, it, they're already on the tax rolls, but in other words, will they be not no longer be diverted to TIF, but would go towards the general fund? Is what I'm trying to ask. There, are there estimates on when each phase will likely be completed? Was there a third-party review done on this application by an independent consulting firm with experience in public finance and real estate development at the expense of the applicant to evaluate the applicant's financial projections to assist in evaluating whether the amount and allocation period is required for the applicants to receive a commercially reasonable, reasonable return on investment? I, I believe the answer to that is yes. I just had some uh, had a conversation with Mr. White. I was under the the impression that that had happened, and it, so they can explain that. But I didn't see any reference to it. I did see something about the younger economic impact analysis, but I didn't see the the other one would be more of a but for analysis. And so I'm, I'm glad to know that 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 was done. Uh, number seven is just a general question. We we now have two two tips in that same general area, and I wondered not as part of this tip because this is not on the Bend property, but we've kind of got a gap between West 19th and where the stadium tip begins. And I was just wondering, has the city had any discussions about possible connectivity there in the future? And then uh, finally, you'll recall one of the changes that the, the IDB made and the policies and procedures is, is you decided you wanted to appoint two members to the application review committee, which will be meeting, Jermaine can probably tell us, I would think June, July or something. And so you would need to appoint Two, two members to do to that. So I wanted to ask, and that would be a, probably a germane or a city attorney question, will the July agenda include the appointment of two members uh, from, by the IDB for the application review committee? Uh, thanks to the board, as always, for your time and dedication. I would also like to thank the applicant for, for what they have done to date on the Ben Project, their investment, and also for their bold vision for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sharp. Anyone else from the crowd? Seeing none, uh, this board will take action on, looks like, five resolutions this morning. Um, we'll have a public hearing on our pilot policies and procedures and then a few items requiring discussion. Uh, first resolution authorizing the IDB chair, vice chair, and city finance officer to execute a management representation letter for the auditor Henderson, Hutchin, and McCullough PLLC for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Anyone need to speak to that? This, this is something, at least as the city attorney, I'll tell you about that. It's needed every year. We have to have a letter to the state here for our audit. Henderson Hutchison has been doing that for us, and we just need to authorize that to be uh, executed by them. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Move. Second. Yeah. All uh, in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Resolution passed. Resolution B, authorizing the IDB chair, vice chair, to execute a Seventh Amendment to the lease agreement in substantially the form attached with the Volkswagen Group of America Chattanooga Operations, LLC. Ms. Freeman. Good morning, Jermaine Freeman, uh, Economic Development with the City of Chattanooga. So this resolution calls for uh, the release of an approximately 182-acre site uh, located at Enterprise South Industrial Park. Uh, that parcel is part of a lot called Lot 34, uh, and Lot 34, this 182-parcel uh, area, uh, had previously been a property that was optioned to Volkswagen. We do have a representative from Volkswagen here, Mr. Ian Levy. Uh, General Counsel for Volkswagen, who is here today. Um, Ian, let me know if you have anything you want to add. Um, but otherwise, the release of this property does allow for uh, the Chamber, as well as the City and County, to work together uh, to continue to pursue economic development activity uh, on this parcel. Um, and Mr. Charles Wood is also here from the uh, Chattanooga Area Chamber. Charles, do you have anything you want to add? Okay. Thank you. Any questions from the Board? Clarify. So this resolution just releases this tract. Correct. It releases and basically puts it back in the management of the IDB and that is chamber. correct. Okay. That is correct. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll take a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Move. Second. Move. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Resolution passed. Uh, resolution C, authorizing the IDB of the City of Chattanooga to take title to certain real and personal property in connection with a Cordza uh, Inc. project to lease such property to Cordza Inc. and to enter into an agreement for payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Chair, and congratulations to you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is um, as part of the, ge the general process of doing pilots with the city. You all, as the Industrial Development Board, uh, under state law have the ability to take title to the property uh, in the form of a lease. This is sort of done in, con in conjunction and in coordination with the city council and with the county commission. And for this project, which is the expansion of Cordza, which is located on North Access Road uh, in our Hickson area, uh, this would be the last step of the process. Uh, today I'm joined by Mr. Tommy Johnson, who is uh, the site manager uh, over Cordza's facility on North Access Road. And I'll invite Tommy up to speak here in just a moment. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'll try to do my best Tommy impression here momentarily. Um, but this is the role of the Industrial Development Board. Um, your role under the, the state law and with the state of Tennessee is to take actions that, that help you to uh, really expand uh, and grow the local economy. And you do so by helping to promote industry, trade, and commerce through a variety of ways one of which is by uh, being able to take title to property uh, so that you can abate taxes uh, for a company when that company is choosing uh, and selecting to, to undertake a significant expansion. Cordza, um, and Tommy, feel free to jump in if I say anything wrong here, but Cordza manufactures uh, tire nylon that is used uh, in tires. Um, and um, in addition to their facility in Laurel Hill, North Carolina, Cordza, which is based in Turkey, is looking to expand their presence um, over uh, in Hickson on the North Access Road area. And so their facility, which is the former DuPont facility, um, is also located very close to the current industrial park that's being built by Rise Partners. Um, and so we are, we are very happy uh, and very supportive of Cordza's expansion. Uh, these are the details of the expansion. So the expansion contemplates uh, adding 200 additional jobs. There is a $50 million expansion, $5 million in real property, $45 million in equipment. The pilot is for a term of 10 years, and the pilot only applies to the improvements, not to the existing property. Uh, school taxes, of course, are always protected. Uh, that is also the case with this pilot as well. Uh, and so property taxes that were in place before the pilot will continue to flow to the city's general fund and to the county's general fund. Um, in addition to uh, all of those benefits, uh, the company has uh, committed to working with the city uh, to provide some future uh, greenway access as we look to build out a future greenway uh, on the north side of the river. Um, the Cords of Property is actually located between property that's owned by Rise Partners where we already have greenway access as well as city-owned property um, uh, where we could create greenway access. And so having uh, Cords of Partnering with the city for that uh, is, 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 is is a wonderful thing for the community. Um, they are also committed to partnering with the city and county on a build within apprenticeship initiative that will allow uh, the company to, to really sort of target apprenticeship opportunities to local workers. Um, and Cordza has made best faith efforts to publicize job opportunities uh, to local residents as well as opportunity, construction opportunities for local contractors. This is the site. Uh, so. Uh, Tommy, if I'm not mistaken, is it the big yellow square, the yarn warehouse, where the facility would be? Okay. I'll let Tommy come up and explain. And so once again, this is Mr. Tommy Johnson, uh, Site Supervisor and Manager for Cordza. Thank you and good morning. Where's the corner? Okay, so uh, number one, thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, thank you, Jermaine, very much in the city of Chattanooga. So just to the right side of the yarn warehouse, uh, we have a, a pretty large vacant area in our plant. Our plant size is at roughly 1 million square feet, and currently we're using about 400,000 square feet of that actively. So our intention is, is to uh, take a portion of this unused area and uh, increase the opportunity for us to uh, gain greater market share by, by making a dipped process uh, which we currently do at our Laurel Hill, North Carolina facility, thus streamlining the opportunities here uh, for courts in Chattanooga. This is the proposed expansion area. Um, 
it's, uh, like I say, it is vacant at the current time. The, the good thing is we're looking at hiring, uh, once this is totally built out, an additional 200 jobs at the courts of facility. This is what the building, our intention for the building to look like uh, once we are finished. Um, and if we, um, the site's got a long heritage here in Chattanooga. And so we want to keep that heritage uh, close as, as we can to the same. And we, uh, we really we're, we're thankful for the people we have working for us and they want to come and they stay with us, which is, which is a positive. Thank you, sir. And so, as I mentioned, this is the last step of the process. So um, to take you through the approval process up to date, uh, on April 18th, we presented the Cords of Pilot to the City Council's Economic Development Committee. Uh, on April the 26th, we did a similar presentation uh, before the County Commission during their agenda preparation session. Uh, on May the 3rd, the County Commission approved the pilot. Uh, also on May the 3rd, the County Commission approved uh, the Fast Track Grant, which is a grant provided uh, for economic development expansions by the Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development. And then on May 9th, the City Council approved the pilot. So um, the only step remaining is that today the IDB takes action to um, uh, uh, accept the lease and then the pilot will commence and we will uh, hopefully see $50 million of investment and 200 new jobs on North Access Road. Any questions? Any questions to the board? Sir? Question on the, the 200 new jobs. Yes, sir. Do you give veterans preference? We, we do hire veterans. We have many veterans that currently work for us, uh, and we honor them uh, just like everyone else does. So, yes, sir, we do. So you do give veterans preference? We do. Thank you. Any other questions? Quick question. What, what's your time frame on this? Um, we actually have already uh, submitted for permits for demolition and for the foundation work. And so uh, we're expecting to have those permits picked up uh, from the city office this week. We're ready to go. So you're, you're going to get started pretty quick. What, what do you see completion? Uh, we anticipate being in production uh, second to third quarter 24. Thank you. Any other questions? I had a quick one. Uh, Mr. Freeman, do you mind to give a quick commercial about the Build Within Apprenticeship Program? I think that's the first time this board may have seen that. Uh, so I'm just curious to have you address what that is and what that means for this project. Sure. So the Build Within Apprenticeship Initiative is uh, a partnership that the city, county, and uh, school board uh, have partnered on. It is a national initiative in which Chattanooga was selected um, as one of the sort of startup uh, cities for implementation. Uh, we are one of a very few cities that um, are part of this, but essentially uh, the Build Within platform will sort of create an online platform that will allow companies to manage uh, sort of an apprenticeship application process and uh, manage applications for apprenticeships uh, that local residents uh, submit to work for their companies. Um, so we're really excited. Um, obviously, it is uh, an opportunity to see an expansion of the apprenticeship model here in Chattanooga, which is always a good thing. Uh, and then to the extent that it can also help us to hire and identify local talent, uh, that is also a good thing and also great for our community. Thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Is there a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your investment Thank in our you. city. Uh, resolution D, uh, one everyone's been waiting for, intent, uh, accepting the application attachments from Urban Story Ventures as complete and the submission of the tax increment financing applications for the Bend area, a.k.a. the one west side TIF area, to the Chattanooga City Council for consideration and approval. Um, I will say at the outset, Mr. Freeman, I do look forward to your presentation. I want to make sure that we're sure. clear uh, about the timing of the steps. I know that we've, we've been through this before, but to make sure that you can reiterate for us exactly all the steps that are, that are in this process. I also want to disclose to my fellow board members, I will need to recuse myself or vote on this one. I had a professional relationship with one of the entities uh, that was working on the, the West Side Evolves uh, project. So before we go any further, I wanted to mention that for the record. Um, I, I know we'll have lots of questions, uh, but I want to make sure you have a chance to give your full presentation before we get there. Sure. So, um, good morning, members of the board. Um, 
This is a, a unique and rare project uh, for the city, and it is a project uh, of which the city and county um, are very excited. The city of Chattanooga's Department of Economic Development has received an application for tax increment financing from Urban Story Ventures, LLC. This application requests up to $115 million in TIF assistance through the utilization of new incremental property tax revenue to be split between the city and county, as well as new incremental sales tax revenue from the city's portion of new incremental sales tax revenue created by the project. Uh, projects of this magnitude are often not possible without the partnerships of the public and private sectors. The developer, Urban Story Ventures, contemplates a new live, work, play environment that will expand our city center. The project contemplates new Class A office space, entertainment space, retail space, and park space, as along with hospitality space. Along with the project, significant new residential space and mixed-use buildings and multifamily housing will also be created. As you know, this board has worked tirelessly to revise and create new TIF policies in partnership with the Kelly administration and the Chattanooga City Council. The City Council is scheduled to vote on the IDB's recommended changes during the City Council's regular meeting tomorrow. The updates provided by the IDB and City Council will be adhered to during the application process for this TIF. Full presentation of this TIF is planned to be provided to the elected officials of the local legislative bodies next week. I will go ahead and share that this TIF does protect all taxes that would be set aside for public schools. And in fact, this proposal contemplates additional funding for public education over and above what would normally be made available. If the legislative bodies authorize the preparation of an economic impact plan, city staff will ensure that the subsequent application review committee will also include representation from the IDB. So now would be the time for you all as members of the board uh, to confirm your selections to the application review committee if authorized by the city council. Additionally, all stormwater fees are expected to be paid and the city of Chattanooga has begun working with the third party public finance advisory firm, which specializes in real estate development. At the advice of our external TIF council, Mark Mamatov, the firm is called Municap and they have done a great deal of work reviewing incentives for the city of Knoxville. <coughs> this project is unique in that it also affords our city, city the opportunity to uplift our city's west side. As part of the proposed TIF, the city is contemplating historic investments to assist the Chattanooga Housing Authority as it attempts to implement the West Side Evolves Transformation Plan, which was adopted by the Chattanooga City Council last year. That plan calls for the Chattanooga Housing Authority to submit an application for the much coveted Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant from the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. If awarded, that grant could help unlock millions of dollars in additional investments to revitalize the West Side so that the West Side grows and prospers alongside the bend. This can be done through intergovernmental or interlocal agreements between the City of Chattanooga and the Chattanooga Housing Authority um, and, our, and our partners. As I mentioned, the sheer scale of these projects is not possible without the vision of private, developer, of private development partners, as well as the partnership of community partners like the Housing Authority. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jimmy White of Urban Story Ventures to introduce himself and share a few words about the bend and Betsy McWright of the Chattanooga Housing Authority to introduce her, herself to share a few words about Westside Evolves. It is the city's intent uh, to facilitate and to work with the developer and the Chattanooga Housing Authority in the vision of a unified one West Side. Mr. White. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jimmy White with Urban Story Ventures. I'm a general partner, owner, developer of The Bend. Uh, appreciate your time today. I'm excited to be here. Um, you know, this is a huge undertaking, um, and I don't want to underscore that. This is larger than one developer. Um, you know, this project has been in the works for a very long time. Uh, when we bought the site initially from GE, there were three people working there. And, you know, we've quietly been going about our business and, and during the pandemic, leased over a million square feet, now have several hundred people working there, which is exciting, but we really haven't scratched the surface. And, you know, I think maybe we have an aerial, we can see the beautiful riverfront here, but I, I really want to talk about, you know, the connectivity to downtown. We've always said, um, you know, our mission is to bring the river to the city and the city to the river. Um, growing up as a kid in Chattanooga, I remember how 
significant uh, the change was that happened when the aquarium started to redevelop in the late 70s and 80s and what that's done for our community. And when you think about the sheer undertaking of that that happened in the late 70s and 80s and compare it to today, what, we're, what we have the opportunity to do with the bend, it's really incredible. Um, you know, I like to tell people uh, that are coming to Chattanooga and looking at the site, when you think about going from the Hunter Museum to 27 and from the riverfront to 4th Street, there's a lot of density there. There's a lot of different use types. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of tourists, a lot of uh, locals that, and of course, Riverbend this past weekend, you know, a lot of things happen there. This area is twice as large as that. And so, you know, the 21st century riverfront, I think, was a $120 million investment. Um, it took a village to pull that off. And Chattanooga has a history of, of public and private working together. Our riverfront being two and a half times as large as that gives you a sense of the undertaking that we're, we're trying to accomplish. You know, the river walk goes through our site. That's a significant investment that the city and the county has made. You know, there were properties that weren't owned at the time when that happened. Um, you know, you can see here in the foreground the, the ADM site. Uh, there was a piece from the railroad that we recently acquired. Now all that's contiguous. And so, um, you know, as Chattanooga, I'm really excited. Um, um, I think, um, again, without this TIF, without the help from the city and the county, um, this wouldn't happen. Um, so, um, with that being said, I think Betsy is, is ready to uh, talk about our partnership with CHA. Again, I think one of our first meetings with Betsy um, was four years ago. Four years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, and again, I, I want everyone to understand, you know, this, this is a development for everyone. Yeah, you know, our, our, our first, first week, uh, we opened up what is affectionately known as Big Blue, where Novonix is today. Um, and had uh, a public shred, had over 1,200 people show up. And the Ben plan that is in front of us that, that we're taking on uh, was not a developer coming in to impose his will. This was a, a project that was designed by the community uh, with park space and riverfront and marina and restaurants and entertainment. And uh, so we're really excited about uh, tying that back into the community. Thanks, Jimmy. Good morning, and thanks for having us today. I'm Betsy McCright. I'm the executive director of the Chattanooga Housing Authority. And I mentioned that I've been talking to Jimmy for four years. This dream began really about 15 years ago. College Hill Courts is on the footprint of Westside Evolves. It's our oldest public housing development. It was built in 1940. And quite honestly, it's gotten tired and weary. Right now, there's no central air. There are no ADA acceptable units. The spaces are cramped with very small kitchens, very small closets, and it's time for a change. So back in 2020, we embarked on a planning process. We engaged EJP Consulting and basically set out to learn what the community, both on the west side and in the greater Chattanooga community, wanted for the site. So obviously started in September 2020, right in the midst of a pandemic. But I always tell people when I'm presenting this, the pandemic was our friend. Because typically when you try to get input from a community, you go into a big auditorium, you put little yellow dots on the wall, and you express what you like or dislike. We had to be really nimble. So literally, my staff, residents we engaged, and others in the community went doorstep to doorstep throughout College Hill during that two-month period during the pandemic. We had tablets donated by Tech Goes Home, and we asked about 45 minutes of questions of every family. The questions span from, what would you like your house to look like, to what are your medical needs, what are the needs for your children, and you know, what do you want to see socially, economically, and recreationally on the site? We were able to garner 82% of the comments, which culminated in the plan, which was uh, published in November of 2021. So there are certain things that are going to happen with regard to College Hill and the neighboring sites. One of the non-negotiables was the community wanted to retain the James A. Henry School, which the CHA currently owns. The plan will be to renovate and expand that school to house up to 119 um, seats for um, Head Start students. Additionally, the Sheila Jennings Park, which is currently owned by the city, will be expanded to really become a green space with basketball courts, uh, pickleball courts, water parks, just generally places that people would want to come. So that's the non-residential piece. The residential piece is very exciting. Ultimately, we will take down all of College Hill courts, but we're doing it in a phased way. 
What we plan to do is take on a build first strategy, which is a strategy where we build residential first so that the residents who live in College Hill can see the new units coming out of the ground. Right now, we anticipate we can build in the first phase from 119 to 185 units without taking the first unit down. This time, no longer will we concentrate poverty on the west side. It'll be a mixed income community. So every development will have at least 40% of market rate renters, which we believe is a far more successful model than just concentrating poverty. Um, we've just brought on a, a master developer. It's Columbia Residential. They've been on board for about two months, so we're just getting the phasing planned. But the TIF will be used to help with the infrastructure and the phasing of the residential on the site, and it will be essential. As Jermaine mentioned, with the dedication of TIF proceeds, we will be able to show adequate leverage, hopefully, knock on wood, to garner a 50 million CNI grant. CNI is Choice Neighborhood Implementation. That, in turn, if we get the CNI grant, Tennessee Housing Development Agency will award us subsequent consecutive 9% tax credit awards. And I did a calculation a couple of months old, but for six years, the CNI goes for eight years, but I did the calculation on six years because that's what it was when I did it. Um, that would bring in an additional $98 million of investment to the community. So we appreciate your consideration, and if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you, Betsy, and thank you, uh, Mr. White. Um, so as part of this process, uh, this will follow the normal TIF process. Uh, so starting next week, there will be presentations before the local legislative bodies. Uh, and then in a couple of weeks, the local legislative bodies will vote to take action as to whether or not to pass resolutions of intent to authorize preparation of an economic impact plan uh, because uh, this obviously considers uh, property tax revenue from both the city and the county. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we are abiding by the, the uh, recommended updates from the IDB in terms of the TIF policy. Uh, so we do need uh, two names. And I can't recall whether or not the IDB already gave us two names, but if so, I need a reminder of two names that would serve on the application review committee uh, if the city council and county commission authorized preparation of an economic impact plan. Um, and so that will all happen within the next uh, few weeks. Um, and uh, as I said, we do have a completed application. The um, applicant did pay the new and updated application fee. Uh, and I think that's about it. Any questions? Yes, sir. I got a question for Mr. White. Sure. <coughs> yes, sir. You state that they're going to be retail part of this uh, development. Anything besides bars and restaurants going to go in there? Yes, sir. Um, we are uh, under LOI with a national retail developer that's uh, done many retail developments, you know, indoor, outdoor, uh, excellent programming uh, for our, what we call the canal district. And there will be uh, shopping, you know, from, you know, both restaurants and, and uh, when you, clothing and things like that. You know, retail is in an interesting spot right now, similar to, you uh, you know, uh, working, you know, office space and that, you know, uh, re you know, from a retail perspective, if you're an end user, uh, you know, uh, you want to create a sense of place. It's an experience, right? And so, you know, if you can buy things online, then, you know, you really want to create that sense of place. And that's what we're doing here with the Bend. And, you know, that requires more than bars and restaurants. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sure. Are there any other questions? I had one, one sort of general question and one, one rather technical question. I think, Jermaine, this is, I'm not sure a question for you or for Phil, but just for the record, the, the, the non-purely economic development uses of the TIF proceeds, which include uh, the, the CHA planning and, and I know some, some educational aspirations on the part of the county government. I just want to make sure those, those are permissible under the TIF statute. Yes. So what we are imagining is, is that those funds would flow uh, and Mark Mementoff can speak to this better than I could, but what we would do is the funds would flow to uh, the city and to the Industrial Development Board, and then we would enter into intergovernmental agreements that are permissible 
uh, with the Chattanooga Housing Authority and with the county uh, for the education pieces. Do those come back to this board for approval or is that all between the city council? Those would be approved by the city council and the county commission. Okay. Yeah. And is there a, a public hearing for this project that we're to provide at some point? There is. There is a public hearing for this project. Ideally, we would like that to happen uh, if we can align the timeline at the next meeting of the IDB, which okay. I believe is not the first Monday of July because the 4th of July holiday is right behind it, but the following Monday, which okay. I think is July the 10th. And do I understand you properly? Do you need two names from this body to be on the review committee before this meeting adjourns? <laughs> it doesn't have to be before this meeting adjourns. It just it, it does need to be on the record at some point, whether it's through an, 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 an email or... And I could not remember if... And please forgive me, but I could not recall if during our previous conversations as we reviewed the TIF policies, if you ha all had already selected two names. My colleagues may disagree with me. I don't believe that we did. Yeah. So okay. I think that's something we need to need my, to confirm. My understanding from from our outgoing chair, Mr. Rogers, was that you all had considered the possibility of selecting two names that would serve for an entire year or fiscal year, calendar year or fiscal year, um, so that you wouldn't have to keep doing this process and they would represent the IDB on any TIF application that was submitted during that year. But correct me if I'm wrong, if I misheard that. That's, that's correct. Yeah. And that should be done during an open meeting whenever that selection is done. Okay. Well, so then I would ask the question um, to, to the attorney. Um, would, would they be able to select two names and then ratify those two names at a future meeting? They could, as long as they did it at your next meeting before they did anything on Correct. there. Yes. Very good. Thank you, sir. Um, so that's 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 it. The only other thing that I would mention is I don't think that I mentioned during my, my remarks that this is a 20-year TIF. Um, it is uh, capped at 20 years, and it is 20 years per parcel. So the developer would have the opportunity to trigger different parcels with different 20-year timelines, but it is a 20-year TIF. Um, and with that, I don't think that I have any questions. I do recall that our outgoing chair did have a question about the resolution language. Um, and so I would offer an amendment that would be helpful to the board, if I may, which is uh, to amend the language of the, re of the resolution uh, to strike the words, uh, I think the, it ends with consideration and approval, to strike the words and approval, but to add the words City Council and Hamilton County Commission, uh, just to make sure that that's clear. So, uh, Maria, let me know if you need me to, if that helps you. You're going to so say the resolution would then be for consideration by the city of Chattanooga, by the, Chattanooga, Council. By the C Chattanooga City Council and the Hamilton County Commission. Okay. Yeah. So should we? Do we need to offer volunteers for the for an amendment for the panel or for the for the review panel? It would be helpful. Um, otherwise, I think the attorney has has indicated that you could go ahead and uh, maybe offer. Yes, it would be helpful. <laughs> yes, it would be helpful. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was trying to give you some flexibility, but... You should probably do that. change the resolution first and then... Let's change the resolution and get that okay. going. So, I need a motion to amend it just to add that language. A motion to amend? Yeah. Okay. So, the first um, order is to um, a motion to amend the resolution. So, the, the amended resolution would read, a resolution of intent accepting the application and attachments of the urban story ventures as complete and submission of the tax increment financing application for the bend aka the one riverside tiff area west side, west side. excuse me one west side tiff area to the chattanooga city council for consideration by the city council and the hamilton county commission well i think it would be to the chattanooga city council and hamilton county commission for consideration Okay. Strike approval, correct? That that would be correct. We took out approval already. Yeah, think that's duplicative. Okay. So a resolution of intent accepting the application and attachments from Urban Story Ventures as complete and submission of the tax increment financing application. For the bend, AK, bend area, aka the one west side TIF area, by the city county, by the by the Chattanooga City Council and the Hamilton County Commission Commission for consideration. Correct. Correct. Okay. 
All in favor of that amended resolution? Need a motion. First. A motion, sorry. Motion. A motion for um, the amendment of the resolution. Motion for the amendment. Second. Okay. Action. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And you need to vote to approve. So we need That's to vote motion. now to approve this yes. amended resolution. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay. Then you need to get your two people. If you okay, can. so now let's talk about the two people who are represent the IDB on the um, application committee. Any nominations? I'm willing to be on it. I'll nominate myself. If, if that's a level, I'm willing to do it. As long as you get five votes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Althea Jones and Gordon Parker, any other? nominees I do have one quick question if I may I just want to make sure that for the for our attorney there is not a conflict in having the IDB members serve on the application review committee is that correct we've had that discussion previously in that regard these members themselves uh, at least if they are making any deliberations that occur will have to do so in a public meeting for this body on here but um, that's that's the approach that was requested in the the, the tip request here so okay yes. Thank you. We need a vote. Yep. Okay. So let's um, now take a vote on Althea Jones and Gordon Parker representing the IDB. Any a motion to approve those? Names? No move. No. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Got him. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, resolution E, authorizing the execution of a third supplement to amended and related trust indenture related to the revenue bonds previously issued for the benefit of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee Incorporated. Yes, sir. Hi, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Jeff Billings, Associate General Counsel at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, a little more mundane request. This involves a resolution seeking authorization to execute the third supplemental um, amendment to the trust indenture as a result of LIBOR being sunsetted as a standard that we calculate interest rates. We've had to settle on a new standard and that's so far and that's what these documents uh, uh, authorize is that we replace the LIBOR standard with with a SOFA standard on calculation of the interest rates. Understood. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Take a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much. Item number seven on the agenda, a public hearing for our pilot policies and procedures, which I believe the board got a copy of these uh, in your packet last week. Mr. Freeman? Yes, I believe we have a, a slide that will come up momentarily. and. Um, for the purposes of this of this uh, brief slide deck, I will also uh, ask Charles Wood, uh, CEO of the Chattanooga Area Chamber, to come up to share some thoughts as well. Um, so we have been talking about uh, drafting pilot policies for quite some time. Uh, historically, again, um, we have not had a pilot policy. There has never been, to my knowledge, uh, an adopted pilot policy by either the city or the county. And this is specifically for jobs pilots. So as I've mentioned before, there are different types of pilots that the city and county consider. There are housing pilots and there are jobs pilots. And then in some communities also do retail, uh, retail pilots. Uh, but for the purposes of today's conversation, we are considering jobs pilots, um, which uh, under the state law, the Industrial Development Board has the opportunity uh, to weigh in and to really be a part, uh, bless you, to really be a part of pilot policies in much, this, in much the same way that you approved the lease agreement for Cordza uh, a few minutes ago. So again, this law just reminds you of the role of the Industrial Development Board uh, in helping to expand our local economy and to grow our local economy uh, for the purposes of promoting uh, industry, trade, and commerce. Um, some of the considerations that you'll see in the draft that you've received, and let me just sort of say from the outset, the draft that you've received is just an initial working draft. It is not in any way the final draft. It is not in any way a complete document. 
Uh, the city and county uh, intend very much to, to continue working on this document and to continue seeking advice and counsel and feedback uh, from some community groups um, and community partners to ensure uh, that we are working and making sure that we are designing the policies uh, in furtherance of the city's economic development goals. Um, and so, as we think about economic development, I, of course, report to the mayor of the city, and then I have a counterpart who reports to the mayor of the county, and those are the chief economic development officials for the city and county. And so it's their vision um, that we are often looking to execute and often looking to implement. So we want policies that are also supported by the city council. We want policies that are also aligned with the objectives of the Chattanooga Climbs campaign which uh, uh, Mr. Wood could speak to more, and we want pilot policies that are streamlined to facilitate growth in key industries and sectors that we've identified. Um, some of the key sectors that I, that I just uh, talked about would include manufacturing, especially advanced manufacturing, especially in the automotive sector and, and when it comes to electric vehicles, headquarters and office projects and innovation tech and information companies, logistics and financial services. You all, of course, have already done uh, pilots that fit into both of these categories when you did the Navonics pilot, um, which uh, Navonics is a company that manufactures components that go into batteries for electric vehicles. Uh, and then when you did the steam logistics pilot, uh, which is um, a company that uses back office space and then needed to expand its office space to create a regional headquarters in the John Ross building. Uh, distribution companies, so for example, Amazon, and then any commercial office and companies that are part of industry clusters. One of the reasons, again, that the Bend uh, One West Side TIF that you just heard about is, is an attractive prospect as a project for the city is because it will bring on new commercial office space and help us to attract and recruit new companies. Um, as part of the other, the additional considerations for the pilot policy, <coughs> We also want to focus on the number of jobs being created under the policy, the average wages of jobs, and capital investment. Additional considerations could also be environmental sustainability, higher than average wages, located in dis location in disinvested areas, as well as the commitment to use, uh, to the greatest extent possible, local hires, contractors, and partnerships with workforce development and education. Um, we also really highly, and one of the things that you will have the chance to do is to value companies that are also providing uh, additional benefits like health, dental, paid sick leave, et cetera, for comp uh, among companies because we believe that these things are beneficial to employees. These are the standard terms of current where we are, are currently with most pilots that we do today. So in year one, you see 100% abatement on property taxes. In year two, you typically see 75% abatement. In year three, 60% abatement. And then in years four through 10, uh, you typically see 50% of abatement until the end of the pilot. Uh, we typically, um, for the last uh, few years, have done pilots uh, that uh, did not exceed the maximum term of 10 years. Um, and we are uh, uh, strongly recommending that as you consider the policy uh, and you adopt the policy to sort, to sort of streamline the process, we would still encourage that any projects that fall outside of the policy that you adopt, that those, pol that those uh, projects be considered before the City Council and County Commission. Um, we will continue as part of our next steps to collaborate with the county um, because we want to make sure that we are not working at cross purposes with the county in terms of our economic development strategies. Um, as I said, we'll continue discussions and feedback with community partners. Um, and then uh, we would also, um, I think at some point as part of this process, like to show you sort of a comparison between of other comparable sized cities and their pilot policies relative to what uh, hopefully uh, you all will eventually adopt. Um, uh, and then eventually, once we and the IDB have had a chance to, to get behind some policies that you like, we would obviously like to put these uh, policies forward before City Council for City Council's adoption. Um, and so I think that that is uh, it. Uh, Mr. Wood, do you, do you have anything you want to add? Thanks, Jermaine. Uh, just a couple points. Uh, the first thing I'd say is we've historically not had a policy in place, and this allowed a pretty significant amount of flexibility as far as when projects come before um, this body as well as the City Council and Hamilton County Commission. Um, and as we've kind of gone through this process over time, I think the opportunity here is to formalize a structure 
And the goal around that is really to depoliticize this. And so typically uh, there are several other large communities across the state, Memphis, Knoxville, um, where they have set policies in place. Um, it allows elected officials to adopt legislation and adopt the policy from a legislative perspective. And then really from there, it kind of sets expectations and standards for, for projects in the process as it, as it goes. So that's really our hope is that we see kind of a, a, depoliticiz a depoliticization of, of kind of the process for the incentive piece. And then the second is um, to, to really kind of, I think, help our elected officials with having it be standardized. And so one of the one of the comments we've heard back is every time we get a, have a pilot in front of us, it's like a brand new day. We, different issues get brought up. And so having this, we think, will, will really help us as we're working through that process. The, the one thing I would say that is uh, a disadvantage when we do this is that this will be out there for all the world to see. So every other community that we compete with will also know exactly what our policy is and what our structure is. So I think we have to go into this knowing that and, and part of the reason why uh, Jermaine mentioned kind of analyzing other communities' incentive policies is really to make sure that we um, keep Chattanooga and Hamilton County in a competitive light uh, when it comes for, for economic development projects. So, and happy to take any questions too. I had a question. Charles, I'm curious, do you, do you have a sense of any deals we may have lost? Or, I mean, do you have a, even an anecdotal sense of where um, we have been in an in a uncompetitive posture relative to other markets because of yes. what we've done and, here? And there's a couple of things, I think, that make it challenging. Um, the first is the timeline is particularly challenging. There can be a lot of back and forth because we don't have a structured policy in place. Um, and so being able to have a set structure in place effectively where potential economic development project is looking at us, they know exactly what the steps are, exactly how long it'll take to go, um, and exactly what the terms should be on the front end. Now, again, I think the way uh, Jermaine framed this up is that if you deviate from the policies, then that would require some different steps. But this kind of helps set expectations both on the part um, uh, from the community, on the part of what they would expect from a company, but also from the company on what they could expect from the community. So, and we do track um, projects. I know this is, I love Chattanooga and, and you guys do too. And I think there's this expectation that we win every deal. Um, <laughs> that's not reality. And, um, and so we lose projects more than we win them. Um, and so typically when we stand in front of this body, we've worked through a lot of that negotiation um, from a competitive perspective to get to the point where we have the ability to win a project. Um, but the reality is, is that I would say we are not as competitive as we should be um, on a number of projects. And certainly as we have very large capital intensive projects, that we, we are not necessarily in the best position for those. So this helps really kind of set a framework in place that will, I think, make us much more competitive. Thank you. Um, that's definitely. Any other comments from this board? Steps. Jermaine, when do you anticipate we would have a draft set of uh, language to look at? Well, there, so you have the initial draft that was attached to the to the packet, but then, um, as I said, as we continue to work through with community partners over the next several uh, weeks, uh, I think we can fine tune that draft and get to a final version that we. Um, I would love to say that we could have a final version by July. Knock on wood, that's ambitious. Um, given the fact that when we went through sort of this exercise with the TIF policies, I think it took us about four months. And so, um, you know, we could be looking at, at, at August. But we do want to make sure that rather than rush it, we want to make sure that we get it right. And so if we can make sure that we uh, have a chance to meet with all of our community partners to get their feedback and input, that would be good. Okay. Um, and then I know that this is a, there's a public hearing component of this. So I will get out of the way for the public. <laughs> Do I have anyone from the public wanting to step forward and be heard on this item? Hi. Good morning. Hi. <clears throat> so I'm uh, Joe Payton with uh, Caleb uh, Coalition of Community, Faith, and Labor Groups uh, who've been uh, We've had the, the privilege uh, to work with the city on some of the um, pilot uh, work, and I think I'm very much in support of what Jermaine just expressed, that uh, I think we're, we were under, uh, understanding that the county would also like to be 
aligned with some of this ongoing discussion that we've had and we haven't yet had an opportunity to meet so um, you know with the board's uh, accommodation maybe we can ask for a continuance of this public hearing for the next uh, at least month maybe maybe two months to make sure that we can uh, properly work through some of the remaining uh, topics of discussion um, but uh, I'd like to just say uh, just thank thank the city and its partners for um, for working with us and uh, that's sure and that's where we are thank you I would just uh, sort of say from the administration's perspective we are more than happy to continue the public hearing through to the next meeting uh, as and as long as the process takes yeah I, I don't know does that require action on our part I mean we're not no you're gonna have to have it come back to you again. yeah again yeah so thank you I think we'll have plenty of opportunity to, to keep keep engaging on this anyone else in the public wish to be heard on this matter Thank you very much. If not, we will move to our discussion items. Uh, a, merger of Volkswagen Group of America, Inc. to Volkswagen Group of America, a New Jersey Corporation, Delaware Corporation, Chattanooga Operations, LLC, Affiliates and Assigns. The MOU number two allows assignment. Does the board have a problem with the new name? Volkswagen does not want to lose their pilot benefits, understandable. Does that need to, we need to have some discussion. That will take the form of resolution next, next meeting, I would assume. Uh, this this item here will depend on uh, there will have to be some sort of amendment I think or well it, it does allow under the agreement currently uh, any affiliates and assigns under um, the section two of that uh, memorandum of understanding with Volkswagen just the the question becomes at this point in time when will the the changing of names occur uh, when will any new uh, entities or assigns be developed here and what effect will that have at all on the existing pilot that's a Good question for Ms. Mr. Levy. You want to come up just to shed a little bit of light? Mr. Ian Levy, General Counsel for Volkswagen. Ian Levy, uh, Assistant General Counsel Volkswagen. Thanks for allowing me to speak. Really, it's a, more of an informational um, activity here. Both the original memorandum of understanding that brings Volkswagen to Chattanooga was in the name of Volkswagen Group of America, Inc. Um, the MOU the second MOU uh, regarding the expansion uh, that the city attorney referenced um, is in the name of Volkswagen Group America Chattanooga Operations LLC, which is a Tennessee limited liability company which has a single a single member managed. And the single member is Volkswagen Group America Inc. And the pilot agreement is in the name of Volkswagen Group America Chattanooga Operations uh, LLC or affiliates. So essentially both legal entities um, are covered by all of the agreements that we have with the city, with the county, with this board, with the state. Um, and as we explore and evaluate um, merging these two entities together, um, we just want to make sure everyone is aware of that and that there's no issues or we anticipate any issues with it. But there's really no approval that is being sought, uh, no notification yet as the merger hasn't been completed. Uh, it's still being evaluated. Um, and when, if and when that occurs um, and the merger documents are created, uh, to the extent anything does need to be assigned to an existing entity, um, then we would come back before this board. But for right now, there's nothing to do other than to let you know. Appreciate that. And again, it would still have to have uh, some sort of ability to be able to operate here in Tennessee, even if it became a Delaware corporation, correct? Correct. And the, and the Delaware corporation part of it is really... That's not necessarily going to occur for right now. We're just looking at what does okay. it take to um, to put Chattanooga LLC uh, into Group of America. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about that? Comments? Thoughts on this board? Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Item B, Jermaine Freeman will discuss the handling of the growing small business incentive grant process going forward. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and so one of the things that the city is contemplating is, uh, is streamlining the process for our small business grants. Um, these are small businesses that apply uh, to, for grants up to $10,000. Uh, and those grants are directly connected to the creation of at least five full-time jobs. Many of you have seen those grants come before this board. It's been a while since we've had one, uh, but there's uh, a few in the pipeline. And so um, as part of the process though, uh, one of the things that we would like to do as a city is to start to move the 
uh, application process and sort of the review of those grants to uh, the Southeast Tennessee Development District. Southeast Tennessee Development District is a quasi-governmental organization that works closely with the city and county on several different initiatives, including the processing of our Brownfield grants. Um, and so uh, it would streamline the process uh, for the city uh, to start to move those grants over to the Southeast Tennessee Development District at some point in the, in the future. So at some point, we will come back with a resolution um, asking for the board uh, to authorize uh, the transferring sort of of the program uh, to Southeast Tennessee Development District just to help us with the processing of the applications. The decisions as to whether or not companies are awarded will still lie with this board. So all of the applications, the Southeast Tennessee Development District will make their recommendations. They will still come back before this board for you all's uh, final decision. Great. Any questions on that? Thanks, Jermaine. Yes, sir. It's a good program. Uh, Ernst & Young study for the July meeting. I believe this pertains to the Chamber's uh, strategic plan. So as part of the, the continued work that we do with economic development, obviously with the Chamber, um, <laughs> there is uh, a lot of work that Ernst & Young has done sort of contemplating the city's growth contemplating sort of our economic development future. Um, and so uh, Charles, uh, Mr. Wood and I thought that it would be good for Ernst & Young to be able to share that information with this, with this body, given the fact that this board is uh, so, such a key part of our economic development uh, work here in the city. Charles, anything you want to add? I just say the the plan that we've um, we've adopted at this point was we had a pretty significant amount of engagement around it, and I can speak to that in July um, just to give you background. But we had a steering committee of about 50 folks. We had more than 1,200 community members uh, surveyed, and then of course we had um, city council and the Hamilton County Commission as well engaged in that process. So it's been kind of out there a little bit, and for us, it really focuses on kind of three core tenets. So one is around more traditional economic growth. Um, the things that you see with pilots and things like that. The second is really around workforce development. Um, and the third is innovation, technology, and entrepreneurship are kind of the, is the third focus. So there's a, um, we have kind of guiding principles that follow all and kind of cut across all three of those three tenants. So economic mobility is a pretty significant one, as well as economic in inclusion, and then collaborative leadership. And so that's, if you think about the history of Chattanooga and kind of the engagement across multiple sectors, um, those are the guiding principles as part of that plan. And so we'll we'll run through that with you um, and give you some of the highlights. I think it's it's pretty in depth, but hopefully it'd be helpful um, for this group to see that, and particularly around things like our target industry sectors, um, around some of our strategic initiatives. We're pretty focused on air service development. We're very focused on talent attraction as part of this plan. Um, and then as well on kind of some of our, our marketing strategy around innovation and technology. Has, has this plan been approved by your board, Charles, or what's the status um, it, it has not been approved by the board, but it has been, uh, our steering committee kind of has, has recommended that forward. Got it. So in July, we'll hear a presentation from, will anyone from ENY be here to comment? Or? They should be, yes. Great. Sir. Okay. Yep. Looking forward to that. Thank you. Any questions on that from anyone? Good deal. Uh, is there any other business uh, from this body that we need to entertain today? If not, I will hear a motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Meeting adjourned.